Hi everyone. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. And although our churches are open, there are limits to the numbers of people that can attend. And so we will broadcast a Mass from the Jesuit Institute at 12.30 on Ash Wednesday. And we want to invite you to prepare for that Mass. On Ash Wednesday, we mark the beginning of Lent by the signing of our foreheads with ashes. And this year, the Vatican has asked us to do that differently in a way that maintains social distance. Priests have been advised to use the words for the signing once and then, with masks on, sprinkle some ash on heads in silence. For those of you who will join us online, who cannot get to Mass for one reason or another, we invite you to prepare ashes at home. The ashes are normally from the dried out palms used on Passion Sunday of the previous year. We burn those and we use that ash. We invite you to burn palms, or if you don't have, any other green leaf that has dried out. If you don't have anything, that is okay too. Remember, we are living in extraordinary times and the Lord knows that. We must do what we can and not what we can't. If you can, prepare your ash and have it with you on Ash Wednesday. And during the Mass, at the appropriate time, we will invite you to pray with us and then sprinkle some of that ash on your own heads or on the head of anyone who is with you at that time. Remember too that the Jesuit Institute is offering a morning of reflection starting at 9 a.m. and finishing at 12.30 with this Mass online. If you are not joining the Day of Reflection, you can still join in with the Mass. The important thing is, we just want you to feel like you can participate and prepare yourself and hence have ashes ready. We look forward to celebrating the beginning of the sacred Lenten period with you. May God bless you all. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together the sixth Sunday of the year to celebrate this Eucharist. We bring to the Lord at the beginning of this Eucharist all our own intentions in what has been a difficult time, asking the Lord for what it is that we desire. We always start our gathering by acknowledging that we are sinful, that we are weak, and that we need the Lord's mercy, but most of all, the Lord's healing and forgiveness. So let's bring the brokenness of our lives to our loving God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, where you will come to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray.
O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling or an eruption or a spot, and it turns into a leprous disease on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons the priests. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest must pronounce him unclean. His disease is on his head. The leper who has this disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose. And he shall cover his upper lip and cry, Unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone in a habitation outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a hiding place for me. You surround me with cries of deliverance. You are a hiding place for me. You surround me with cries of deliverance. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. You are a hiding place for me. You surround me with cries of deliverance. To you I have acknowledged my sin. My guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you have forgiven the guilt of my sin. You are a hiding place for me. You surround me with cries of deliverance. Rejoice in the Lord. Exult, you just. Ring out your joy, all you upright of heart. You You are are a hiding place for me. You surround me with cries of deliverance. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, Do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God, just as I try to please all men in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, a leper came to Jesus, begging him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And he sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to the people. 
But he went out and began to talk freely about it and to spread the news, so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Was Jesus a rebel, you might ask yourself, after hearing today's gospel, what was he thinking? We live in a time of pandemic, and we know all too well the importance of obeying the public health rules. And Jesus disregards these, and the leper too, as they break the Levitical code. Throughout history, Few diseases have been as dreaded as this horrible affliction called leprosy. It was so common and severe among ancient peoples that God gave Moses extensive instructions as to how to deal with someone who had leprosy. We heard those in the book of Leviticus this morning. Leviticus tells us that lepers were to wear torn clothes, let their hair be disheveled, and they were to live outside the camp, outside of the community. And so these homeless and unwanted individuals were to shout out, unclean, unclean, when a person without leprosy approached them. This seems to be a pretty humiliating existence. And so lepers suffered from two things. First, the disease itself. And second, being ostracized from their community. They were forced to live outside of community, separated from family and friends, and thus deprived of any experience or form of human interaction one may indeed wonder what was worse, the social ostracism or rather the devastating skin disease that they had. And St. Mark tells us that this leper abruptly approaches Jesus. We're told begging him, kneeling before him. The news of Jesus had clearly got around, even to these reviled and ostracized lepers. And the leper says to Jesus, if you choose, you can make me clean. By saying, if you choose, you can make me clean, it seems to me that the leper is doing two things. First of all, indicating his faith that Jesus can do this. And second, challenging Jesus to act. He challenges Jesus to do something that is radical in the ancient Near East, not only to interact with him, but also to touch him. And notice that Jesus responds in two ways. He orders the man, after he's cured him, to tell nobody of what has happened, and then Jesus sends him to the priest. Only a priest could declare someone cured of leprosy. And so, as required by the law, Jesus sends him to the priest for verification, if you wish, that he is now cleansed. Notice, Jesus breaks the law by going near this leper, and now Jesus upholds the law by sending the leper to the priest, because That's what the Levitical law says he must do. We may think that this is a contradiction. But the same happened in last week's gospel, if you look carefully. Jesus breaks the ritual law for the good of another. Not for his own good, but rather for the good of another so that he can complete his mission. 
And I want to suggest to you today that there are three things that this text invites us to. The first one is that most of us will probably never encounter a leper, nor will we know what it means to be completely ostracized from a society. But there are other forms of leprosy today which destroy human beings, kill their hope and their spirit, and isolate them from society or from community. And so it seems to me the invitation for us is to identify the lepers in our own society and in our own lives. Those suffering with physical diseases, those who we stigmatize or isolate or shun for one reason or another, those we, so to speak, cut off from the land of the living. In this country, in South Africa, for a long time, those who were HIV positive were stigmatized and isolated and shunned, not only by communities, but even by their families. There are still some who find themselves living among the dead. And that same stigmatization and isolation and shunning can happen to a woman who has been raped. It can happen to those who have been abused in families or by those abused in the church, by addicts, by refugees and migrants. Like it or not, many churches and ministers still scandalously ostracize gay people. And I wonder what engaging with this text and listening and watching Jesus says to us today about those we ostracize. It is a matter of conscience if we are seriously going to follow Jesus that we too recognize those who are ostracized and like him do what we can to bring them back. I think the second invitation is a tough one as well. I think we are invited to ask what the social conditions are and how we contribute to them by our attitudes and lifestyles that force people today to become the living dead, relegating them to the margins, relegating them to the cemeteries and the dungeons of profound indignity and poverty, despair and isolation, sadness and depression, homelessness, racism, addiction, and mental illness. You know, a society or a community is not some amorphous thing out there. It is constructed by people like you and me, by our attitudes, by our values, by our choices, our lifestyles, and the patterns of our consumption. We force some to live among the dead by the choices that we make. And just as the leper challenges Jesus to act, and Jesus takes up that challenge when he sees perhaps the glimpse of a freedom for this man, so too we are invited to do the same. So the invitation for us is to examine our own lives and ask ourselves in what way have or do the decisions I make relegate others to live among the dead outside of the camp, outside of community. And the third and final thing, it seems to me, that we are invited to do is to learn how to discern. Jesus does something radical. He breaks the Levitical code. He interacts with someone he should not be near. Yet, he also upholds the law when it is good for the leper. So he can be publicly reinstated into community. 
Jesus shows us that he is discerning in his use of the law. He upholds religious law, but is able to delicately balance that when the need of the human person is greater than the letter of the law. He lives the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. And we too, it seems to me, are invited to do the same. You know, one of the worst traits, it seems to me, of the church and of Christians is our tendency to bash others over the head with law. Not to take anything into consideration, but simply throw the book of the law at people. Jesus knows how to discern. And the true follower of Jesus, it seems to me, is someone like him who is slow to speak, slow to make judgments, and slow to beat people over the head with the book of the law. Because they, like Jesus, have the gift of discernment. It's an invitation to us to learn how to discern, to develop that gift of discernment, to live discerning lives so that we can distinguish between the letter of the law from the spirit of the law for the good of all, as Jesus does. Let's ask the Lord today to help us to identify the lepers amongst us. To ask that hard question, how do our lives force others to live among the dead by our attitudes, our lifestyles, our biases, our prejudices? And finally, let's ask the Lord to give us the gift of discernment so that we, like Jesus, can be free and help others to find the freedom too that they desire. So let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed as we make our own profession of faith. And I invite you, wherever you are, to join us as we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So friends, we have heard God's word. We have reflected upon that word. And we respond now by bringing our own prayers, our needs and the needs of all our brothers and sisters, especially those who find themselves lepers in our world, to our God. For the Christian community, that it may be a place where sinners and outcasts can find acceptance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the human family, that God may bind its members in ties of friendship and mutual cooperation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For prisoners, drug addicts, and all who feel the pain of rejection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the members of this community, that we may be sensitive to the suffering of those around us and ensure that they do not have to suffer alone. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, that may we find comfort in the knowledge that they are in God's safe keeping. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own special needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, we thank you that we can bring these, our prayers, before you, knowing that you hear them and answer them as you know best, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May we all accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good of all God's holy church. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exult and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Butti, our Bishop, Duncan, his assistant, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may we, your church, stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to pray for peace, peace in our own hearts, in our families, in our country, and in our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.